So being that it is Throwback Thursday, it seems only appropriate that we talk about an <laughs> age-old contraption that um, is contraption. old. Contraption. <laughs> well, it is. It has become new again. Now it has letters and numbers and kids. It's called a typewriter. Yeah, contraption type has negative writer. connotations. Think about the typewriter and how it's carried so many writers it's and an people instrument. through decades. It's an institution. So we're bringing in Chris Sadegui. <laughs> and yes, the typewriter making a comeback. This is the reason we have throwback Thursdays. We have things, we improve those things, then we get sick of those improvements, so we go back yeah. to what worked. We're going to talk more about the typewriter's comeback coming up at 6 o'clock, but I want to introduce you to somebody that we have in studio. We brought her in, Fatima Hersey. She knows a thing or to about typewriters. If you're ever out in Bishop Arts, keep an eye out. You may have seen her typing up poems for customers that are passing by. And we brought her into the studio this morning because when she's out in Bishop Arts, she actually lets her customers pick the topic. So we are going to put her to the test this morning. And Fatima, you told me you've been doing poetry for years, but the typewriter actually changed the way you did poetry. How so? Yeah, so before, um, when I would write in my journal, it would be strictly the traditional form of a poem that we think, right? Blocks in a stanza. And so now my poetry is a lot more uh, artfully displayed on the page, I guess you could say. So when, I'm, when I have a poem in my head, instead of just being one line, and now it's kind of everywhere, and I've played with the spacing a lot more, and line breaks. Great, all right. You let your customers pick the topic. This morning, we're gonna let our viewers pick the topic, and here's what they have to vote on. They can choose the poem to be about traffic, the Texas heat, or Jerry Jones meeting the Pope. <laughs> if, if I had a vote, I know which one I'd vote for, but I'm not gonna, not gonna influence the vote at all, but go to WFAA.com slash vote now or on the WFAA app, you can click on the vote now tile. We're gonna leave this poll open for 30 minutes and then we're gonna come back and put you to test. Think you can handle that? Yeah. All right, we'll see. Ron and Alexa. I like right. it. It's sort of like it, it's sort of like when a comedian just takes a topic and they mm -hmm. impromptu mm -hmm. come up with write a comedic skit or something, or a rapper who takes a few things and turns it into a rap. She does it with poetry. And like we said, we're going to be objective, <coughs> Jerry. Um, <laughs> but we'll see what you all have to say about what you'd like her to write. I feel like I feel like Daybreak's gone highbrow. Yeah, and I think what's Her ironic moments. is I sort of wondered if the typewriter was making a comeback when I started to see on the social media platform Instagram all those typed up little sayings mm -hmm. that people are now doing quotes and so forth. Um, so we're looking forward to this fun There's little There's an appreciation for it, for yeah. sure. We are featuring a local poet who uses a typewriter to write poems. She's typically in Bishop Arts, right there on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Folks come by and throw out a topic and she writes a poem. So we gave you a few options here. Traffic, Texas Heat, or Jerry Jones meeting the Pope. We've had more than 100 votes right now and so far overwhelmingly. 60% uh, go to Jerry meets the Pope, although there was a lot of interest in the Texas Heat as well. So we're gonna hear her story in about seven minutes from now. And, and the poem coming up at the end of the show. You've got your work cut out for you, Fatima. I can't wait to hear how you, how you make poetry from However, Jerry Jones and the Pope. Are we, giving you, are we giving you less or more time than you usually take? I'm thinking a more. A little more, more right? Because right. you do it right there in, in, yeah. in real time with a customer on the sidewalk. All right, thank you very much for being here. This is a fun this little experiment fun. this morning. Here's another <laughs> blast from the past for you. Some of us remembering the clicking keys and the ringing bell of a typewriter, which I mentioned just a few moments ago. So how this ancient tool is giving North Texans an appreciation for the art of words. We just called the typewriter ancient? <laughs> I guess we did. What does that make those of us who actually used it? We're, we're just antiques, uh, you and me. I guess so. We're, we're priceless. Something the minute you get your hands on this wonderful portable, you find yourself with an urge to express yourself. Now that can be oh my God. important. Not express only in school, yourself. But in you have the urge to express yourself. Um, how's this for a throwback Thursday? You probably haven't seen a commercial like this one in a while. In fact, this one is from 1958. Remember that? That was a good year for you, Ron. Um, <laughs> well, it's out with the new, actually. And back in with the old this morning on News 8 Daybreak, one of our producers called it ancient, mm -hmm. although I don't know if I agree. But a North Texas woman with a love for vintage typewriters, you, do you hear her? She now <laughs> uses them to share her talents with the community. I love this idea, Chris. That's right. And you know, we like Ron mentioned a while ago, we saw this a few years ago with the vinyl records. We come up with things, they're new, they're improved, they're more efficient. But then we find out that although technology makes things easier, you lose something in the process. The sun and moon.
oral on the subject of light. The perfect poem is built on the perfect words. Everything beautiful takes time to blossom. Fatima Hirsi builds them in Bishop Art. And know that she is beautiful. Using the perfect tool. It's a perfect machine. It's just like a poem. Everything serves a purpose. You can hear it. You can feel it. You can have a relationship with something like a typewriter that you can't have with a computer. And it's a relationship more want to experience. And they really want to learn and use and explore one of these. In Lakewood, the store Curiosities sells things from days gone by. There's a cool factor to it. And the typewriters made a comeback. An outdated machine made new again. But it's very young people, people who don't learn it in class, they're not being taught how to type on a typewriter. In fact, a new film, California Typewriter, oh, wow. with Tom Hanks, explores the emergence of typing events and paints the typewriter as sort of a rebellion. We choose the real over representation, the physical over the digital, the self-sufficient over the efficient. We're in a, a time right now where we're going so fast. So if you have one, pick off the dust. You might find a breath of fresh air. It's kind of a way for people to feel more centered, getting back to these older processes where things were a lot more grounded. And a reminder of the joy in taking things slow. Chris Sadegi, News 8 Daybreak. All right, Ron and Alexa, that last shot where I typed out my name, I want you to know while I was doing this story, I got sucked in. I went to an antique shop. I ah. walked out with a typewriter. It cost $53. Doesn't work as well as Fathom is here. I'm going to have to get some work on it. I also talked to somebody who repairs these typewriters. He makes house calls. He says he's been swamped wow. in the last year. So certainly something to the popularity and it making a comeback. Yeah, you got to be careful. There's ribbons you have to put in there that have ink yes. on them and all sorts of things. So that's something you have and to remember consider. And remember well. the corrector too. In some versions of typewriters, I'm not sure about the team is, but yeah, and some you can. Yes, Greg. The white out. The white out. The white out. The white out. You yes. go back. You make a mistake. You go. Can you imagine, kids? Can you imagine? <laughs> you may not have to imagine, kids, if you get on the no train here. No spell. Get on the bandwagon. No have spell a check. No, no. You have to go to a dictionary. Do you know what that is? All right. The moment we've been waiting for has come, Chris. <laughs> we've been talking typewriters all morning. News meets poetry. Jerry Jones meets the Pope. What do you have for us? And the new gods battle the old, turn into a book, a show. Everything is entertainment. Pope Francis knows the ways of the world, opens his home as a token of peace, invites new kings to combat indifference and injustice. Odin watches with one eye open. His ravens fly across all the land, watch the people raise hands and voices in praise of a game well played. This is today's worship. Milk and bread is missing from windowsills. Ancestral altars have been replaced. Now we have Facebook and every kind of screen perfect to discuss and display men who seem like gods. See those Herculean muscles, the way they fly across the field like Hermes. The Pope sees this holiness, does not listen to the god of war whispering in his ear to fear this new worship. This bridge is built to hold all considered holy. My I lord, wow. that was intense, people. I guarantee the Vatican wasn't that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's you pretty did amazing. this within like 30 minutes on your 1963 typewriter. Yes. Very impressive. Can we frame that and keep that here? I oh, think as yeah. a token of um, a gesture from you and something that we will continue to digest. Thank you very much. Thank you for and having me. Yeah, and back. thanks to Chris for bringing us this great story and, Thank you. and awesome. this throwback Thank Thursday. You. Yeah, and we'll post that online as well. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Don't forget, Good Morning America coming up here next, and we will keep you updated on weather and traffic in the next half hour. Take care.